Hi everybody, Michael Snyder here, Seattle weather guy. Just thought I'd do a quick video on fantasy forecasts and forecasts uncertain to explain things a little bit better here when we talk about fantasy forecasts. First of all, let's go with what's coming up this week and on into next week and explore some of that forecast uncertainty. So right now we're looking at a big plume of moisture. You can see the subtropical tap all the way down towards the equator. This is an old tropical system here. And let's put this into motion and kind of check its tracks. It gets towards the west coast here. You'll notice that spinning up as, as it moves towards the Queen Charlotte's there. This is gonna create a very deep low. It's not a big weather maker from Western Washington or Western Oregon by any means. This may be a little breezy along the coastlines, much more so for the Queen Charlotte's and Northern tip of Vancouver Island. But anyway, this is gonna pass a weak front through the system here later this week, just a typical rainmaker, nothing special. You'll see the system kind of move up towards Southeast Alaska. And then the next weather maker is out here, just crossing the dateline. You'll see it also has a uh, subtropical kind of connection all the way back through the down into the Western Pacific and towards the equator. This is the genesis of all our major windstorms along the West Coast. Um, basically, you're dealing with a gradient of much colder polar air to the north and the subtropical warmer air to the south. And obviously, this is just simplifying the meteorology of it. Um, so as we move into Next week, I wanted to show you what we call a spaghetti plot. This gets into the uncertainty of the forecast next week. So let's move through Thursday. As you can see, we've got some nice solid lines. They're keeping to themselves and confidence is high in this locations of these low pressures. Right here, this is a very deep low out here, 940 to 960 meg millibar, sorry. And you can see all these little circles are low pressure centers. And we've got good agreement, high confidence on where this is gonna take place. And you can see it kind of slide towards the Queen Charlotte's, still high confidence there. And as we move into Saturday, you'll notice this weak wave moves towards Western Washington, just a little breezy, a little bit of rain, not, not bit, a big deal. And as the next system moves in here, you'll see things start to get a bit crazy. You can see some red lines in here, some really deep low pressure systems. You'll see some blues in here too. And these can be powerful windstorms, but we still look at this uncertainty. We have no idea exactly where this is gonna set up shop yet and where exactly this is gonna track. So moving a little bit further into the future here, this is Monday morning now, and you're seeing some pretty deep low pressure systems off the Washington coast. Depending on where these track, these can bring big winds inland. But again, as you can see, these spaghetti noodles are all over the place. Forecast confidence is low at this point. So that's basically what we're looking at. The GFS is very similar. Thursday, of course, we're not very far out, so we have much higher forecast confidence. The storm moves north. And with the GFS, you'll notice it has some really deep low pressure centers, but they're a little bit further off the coast here. That's why the GFS hasn't been on board with its ensembles showing big wind storms for the interior. Um, each run, one or two shows a big wind storm for Seattle, for example. So that's what we're dealing with there. And here we're looking at the European model. This shows the actual depth of each individual low pressure center. You can see for Thursday, again, good agreement. We've got all kinds of clustering here with this low pressure, 950, 955, 954. So really good agreement on the strength and position of the storm. You'll notice it move up again. And then there's a weak wave Saturday and the next system comes in here and we've got low pressures all over the place. We've got uh, some really strong lows in here and some really weak lows in here. So this is why it's a fantasy forecast. This is why uncertainty is still low. And I, I try to highlight that every once in a while that a fantasy forecast is just that. It's just fun to kind of look at what these models come up with sometimes. But we are still in fantasy range as of right now. So if you guys like these videos, um, make sure to click like and subscribe and I'll keep trying to make them. And Keep checking back on Twitter and I will keep you guys updated um, daily on what the system looks like for next week. So thanks everyone.